Jay Stunnel here. Look what we came up on today. Let me get to where I can talk here. <clears throat> Look at this. We, this sucker is a big old like box with pontoons on it inside of a kind of a bag, a, a mesh plastic bag. And it's full of oysters. Right now it's full of sand, but I can see oysters up inside of there. Now, you might be wondering what in the world is oysters doing up here on the beach in a bag? Uh, well, I don't know the whole answer to this, uh, but I do know that uh, at the Heart Research Institute, there are folks that their job is working with the oyster farming industry. And so before I make something up, I thought that maybe we could go ask, ask the experts. And so um, stay tuned. We're gonna go ask somebody who knows what's going on. Okay, so we made it here to the Heart Research Institute. We're off the beach. Let's go inside. We're gonna go up to the second floor, which is where they have their oyster lab. And let's see, we'll walk right inside here. You get a front row look at what it looks like in the Heart Research Institute. So let's go upstairs and get to the oyster lab. All right, I'm Ellis Chapman. I work at the Heart Research Institute and I'm starting a program called the Oyster Resource and Recovery Center. And I'm working with oyster farmers who are interested in starting oyster farms. So what we saw on the beach was called a floating bag. It's an economical form of oyster farming that people put small oysters into and it grows on the surface and actively eating the algae and it can grow to a harvestable size of two and a half to three inches within a short amount of time, roughly about seven months. Also, so, that, so that floating bag probably was swept up from a hurricane and came from Louisiana, but also here in Texas, we're growing oysters in a different way. Uh, so this is a small model of a floating cage. There are six slots. that You can put bags like the one we saw on the beach into these slots and close it up and the oysters will just grow on the surface. And once a week, you can come and flip it out of the water, and that exposes it to the air to allow it to desiccate to prevent all the fouling organisms from attaching on it. Another popular one is this is a full size. This is part of what's called an adjustable long line system or an Australian long line system. It was popularized in Australia and New Zealand. Oysters are simply put into here. This is for a small pour, so this is for smaller seed. And so oysters will grow in here. And regularly, these were popularized in places with large tides. So the water line will come up, the oysters will start eating, and then it'll drop and it'll get exposed to the air to allow these fouling organisms to get cleaned off. One of the biggest issues with oyster farming is the amount of biofouling associated with it. So most gear types, like the floating bag, it's got a lot of wave action, it gets exposed to the air. Or a floating cage, you can flip it over once a week or the adjustable long line system, you can raise and lower or let the tide go up and down to allow biofouling to be mitigated. So I'm starting the Oyster Resource and Recovery Center and we're trying to work with people who are interested in farming here in Texas. Texas has just gotten onto the oyster farming industry and we're really trying to promote it as best we can and show people how sustainable and how profitable it can be for Texas. Okay, well, I'm glad we asked an expert because man, we did get a lot of information. Uh, if you're interested in any of those programs that Ellis was talking about, at the end of this video, I'll put some links and stuff like that where you can follow his page and uh, you know check out and see if uh, they got more info if you're interested in getting involved with that. All right, uh, for that, uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.